Uh, my colleague, Catherine Blanchard and I are going to be talking today about um, my if you will. Uh, my name is Carol O'Donnell of the Amazonian Science Education Center. And I spent a lot of my years as a teacher. And so we are here today to talk to you as teachers. My colleague, Catherine Blanchard, she's also an educator. Uh, but she, her expertise is in international education. With that she works with you um, and students like you all over the world. So COVID-19 first happened, we worked with the World Health Organization, who was co-sponsoring the Global Classroom, as well as the Inter-Academy Partnership, to develop a series of lessons to help young students like you know how to protect yourself during this difficult time. You know, for example, we say in this guide for youth that you should stand away from one another or six uh, or two meters, that you should wash your hands with soap and water for 40 seconds, and you should wear a cloth mask, as Cynthia mentioned. And as Bear Grylls uh, told us, it's important to ride into exercise. But we also know that it's also important to support youth emotionally, especially because, as we've heard today, COVID-19 can be very frightening. So none of us wants to get sick and none of us wants or our friends or our teachers to get sick either. So when, so the question is, how can you better deal with COVID-19 during a countrywide lockdown or a personal challenge? What can you do to address concerns that you might have even about global climate change, the refugee crisis or other socio-scientific issues that Andrew from the National Geographic discussed. So today, my colleague, Catherine Blanchard, who helps the Smithsonian Science Education Center engage in mindfulness, will introduce you to two activities that you can do at home to reduce your stress and to stay emotionally healthy during this difficult time. Our goal at the Smithsonian Science Education Center is to help you understand science while also focusing on your emotional physical well-being. Thanks, Carol. And hello, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be with you here on Global Classroom today. As Carol said, some of the Smithsonian Science for Global Goals project materials are designed to help young people keep themselves, their families, and their communities safe from COVID-19. This includes not only physical health, but also mental health. So let's take a few minutes to talk about how mental health and information are connected and how we take in and evaluate new information. I'm not sure about all of you, but I've been receiving so much information about the pandemic and so many other global challenges lately. It's coming through friends and family on WhatsApp, through social media like Instagram and TikTok. Okay, let's be real, I'm not actually on TikTok. Um, and through news sources, local, national, and international. Some of it's important and useful. Some of it is scary. Some of it seems maybe untrue. And it's that potentially untrue stuff that I wanna talk about for a couple of minutes and how that connects to our global health and our global mind. False or untrustworthy information about COVID-19 can be found everywhere. This might include things like magical cures, information about where the virus came from or who's responsible for spreading it. And when people share this information, it tends to travel very quickly and can be really harmful, not just to your own community, but to others around the world. People might change how they're protecting themselves or not protecting themselves. They may develop untrue ideas about others and their trust in science and strong in institutions may dwindle. But we can all help stop the spread of false information about COVID-19. It protects all of us and keeps us safe and it's contributing to our united global health. It can also protect and strengthen your own mental health. As you continue to learn more about how to keep yourself safe from COVID-19 or about any other topics, it's important to decide what information to listen to and what to share with others. One way to do this is to slow down, stop, and think. I'd like you to take a minute to think back to the last piece of, of information that you received before the global classroom. It could have been about the pandemic, about global climate change, or about something else. The first thing we can do is investigate the source. So think back to that piece of information. Where did it come from? Is it from a major credible news source or a known scientific institution? Did you look at the date of its release? Is there information presented in a way that's intended to make you feel a feeling, maybe scared or angry? 
A lot of times false information is written to evoke that emotional response. The next thing we can do is trace that information to its original source. So think back to that information. Did it have quotes from people? Can you go back to those quotes and figure out who originally said it and whether the context is correct? And is that information supported by data and evidence? We are a science education organization, so we want everything that students do to be driven by data and evidence. Finally, if you think, think back to that most recent piece of information you learned about COVID-19 and you're finding, or any other topic, and you're finding that maybe it wasn't a super great source, maybe the information didn't have any data to support it, people were misquoted, or it was written for that really emotional response, it might be time to find another source of information. So think about what other sources you might be able to refer to. This is also a great time to talk to your family or a trusted adult or other person, um, just as Cynthia and Heather said, and, and really talk about what you're learning in the world and, and how you're taking in that information. Making sure that we're learning from credible, reliable, and timely information sources and sharing it with others is one of the most important things that we can do to keep ourselves, our families, and communities safe. It's one of the best ways that we can be globally minded and globally invested supporting our fellow humans around the world. I totally get that this can be an overwhelming topic and weigh on you mentally. It's okay to turn off the television or stop checking social media to take a break. We want you to stay informed, but certainly not at the expense of your mental health and well-being. So the next time that you're feeling stressed out or overwhelmed, there are a couple of things that we recommend you do through our Smithsonian materials. The first is starting by making a list of all the activities or rituals that you're already doing to make yourself feel better and feel safe right now. Cynthia spoke about some of these things. This list might include things like staying connected with friends through technology, reading a new book, playing your favorite game or sport or doing an art project, maybe cooking a healthy meal with your family. And you can refer back to this list and pick something off of it to engage in whenever you feel anxious or overwhelmed. One thing that's on my list that I personally like to do is to practice a calming breath, which I think we have time to do together right now. So start by closing your eyes or finding a soft point of focus for your vision. Notice your breath and where it's naturally moving through your body. Take a big inhale and a big exhale, letting all the air out of your lungs, preparing for the calming breath. On your next inhale, let's inhale for a count of four, three, two, one. Hold on to that breath. And then exhale for a count of six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's take that twice more. Inhaling, five, four, three, two, one. Exhaling, six, five, four, three, two, one. One more inhale, four, three, two, one. One more exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. When you're ready, open your eyes, come back into this space. How do you feel? Whether you're looking for quality source of, of information about what's happening in the world, doing some of your favorite things off of your list or practicing a calming breath on your own. Remember that there are scientists, re researchers, health workers, educators like Carol and me, and other young people around the world who are all working to keep each other safe physically and mentally. No matter what's happening, you are not alone. So with that in mind, I'll turn it back over to Carol. Yeah, thanks so much, Catherine. Really appreciate it. I do hope that you'll try these activities at home, either by yourself or with someone that you live with. You make a list of the things that calm you, practice your breathing as Catherine taught you. And as you work through these activities with others, don't forget to also stay safe during COVID-19. Physically distance yourself from others by standing two meters or six feet away. Cover your mouth and your nose with a cloth to stop the spread of COVID-19 and wash your hands with soap and water. And as our friend shared with us, get outdoors into nature and make certain that you are staying safe. So as our good friend, Dr. Swami Nathan from the World Health Organization tells us, 
it is really important that everyone in the global classroom today, we're all telling you what you should do, but it's really important also that you discover these things for yourself. So take care everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, both physically and emotionally, and stay informed. Mm -hmm.